Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV back with another Market Watch episode. So today we're taking a look at a few higher end cards that are trending on the market today and trying to look at how they will fare moving forward. We're about to hit a really big series of reprint sets with the Megatons, Maximum Gold Eldorado, and Brothers of Legend all coming out in the second half of 2021, which are going to reprint a ton of different cards. Of course, these reprints are going to make the game more affordable and increase card accessibility for newer players which is always a good thing. But at the same time, for those of you who already own these cards, you should be aware of these reprints coming up too, because they may present an opportunity for you to offload the cards now and buy them back once they've been reprinted and are much cheaper in just a few months. Let's get started. So to kick things off, let's take a look at Forbidden Droplet, one of the most talked about cards on the market right now. This card has become a staple for many players, as not only can it negate the effects of multiple monsters, but you can make it so that your opponent can't respond to this card or negate it, making it a really key piece that helps to crack unbreakable boards. This card came out back in Rise of the Duelist and has generally been anywhere from $110 to $130 in terms of price. However, the card did just receive a reprint in OTS Tournament Pack 16 as a really beautiful ultimate rare, and it's confirmed to be getting a reprint in the upcoming Brothers of Legend set. On top of that, there is a possibility that it will be reprinted in the 2021 Megatons as well, as we've seen before with cards like Phantasmate and Boral Sword, that high-end cards can see multiple reprints in a relatively short amount of time. Now the ultimate rares are ridiculously expensive, hitting almost $300 a piece right now, but the secret rares have just started to trend downwards and are currently sitting at the $100 mark. Of course, as we get closer to its additional expected reprints, we should expect Droplet to get lower and lower, especially since the Brothers of Legend reprint is very likely to be a secret rare as well. The card is still meta relevant, right? So especially for those of you that plan on using the card in remote duels and other events as things open back up, expect it to retain a good chunk of its value for several months and maintain at least a $70 to $80 price tag. However, because the original secret rare printing is no longer going to be the highest rarity version of the card, this card is still going to trend downwards in price over time and should see a bit of a sharper decline once one of its easier to pull reprints hits the market at the end of the year. The next card that we're taking a look at here is Chamber Dragon Maid, and this is a card that I'm really hoping you guys haven't been holding on to. Now, although this is a Dragon Maid card, I think it's definitely well known for its role in the Dragon Link deck as one of the best starters that the deck has access to. Dragon Link has of course been one of the best decks of the last several formats, and even though not every single build chooses to run Chamber, a fairly good chunk of them do. Because of this, we were seeing Chamber Dragon made up at $70 to $80 for quite a while, despite how the card was originally a $15 card or so on release. Now, however, the card has fallen significantly back down to the $40 mark, with a reprint announced to be coming up in Maximum Gold Eldorado, which is coming out in November of this year. Now that is still quite some time before the reprint officially drops, but the other thing we have to keep in mind is that Dragon Link is probably going to be hit on the upcoming ban list. I think that the general consensus is that LP is going to be banned, which takes away from a big power play of the strategy. If Dragon Link is no longer one of the best decks of the format, then Chamber Dragon Maid falls back to being little more than a starter card for a not so great archetype. I've always been of the opinion that Chamber Dragon Maid is a type of card that you should be letting go of unless you're planning on playing the deck, and this kind of goes to show why that is. Hopefully if you still own this card, you're able to offload them and recoup as much of your value as possible before this card price tanks any further. Next up, let's talk about Access Code Talker. So I'm sure you guys all know about this card by now. It is one of the strongest extra deck monsters in the game, able to blow up entire boards on its own without allowing your opponent a chance to respond. And it's also incredibly flexible when it comes to bringing it out. This is a card that has been seeing increased play in extra decks over the last little while. Even though the card has always been good, it actually just seemed like the card was being cut from people's list because there wasn't enough room, right? It wasn't played in Shadal Invoked, which doesn't play that many Link monsters. People are preferring Boros or Dragon in Dragon Link because it's a dragon, and then trap-based decks don't really care, they'll just banish it off of Pot of Extravagance or something like that most likely anyways, so it's usually not a super key piece there. 
However, with the emergence of Zodiac Tri Brigade as a top tier threat this format, people are turning to Access Code Talker once again. In fact, at the LCS from over this past weekend, we saw Access Code Talker in all of the top Zodiac Tri Brigade builds. As a result, we've seen the card go from being $70 through most of 2020, to $90 as we entered 2021, to now coming up to its current market price of $120 a piece. This is kind of strange, as the card is expected to be reprinted in the 2021 Megatons, though to be fair it is totally possible that the card could be excluded from the set. However, I think the card is too iconic and too in demand with a lot of the player base for it not to be included in such a major set. If you guys are looking to play this card, I'm generally always going to say that it's safe for you to hold on to that one extra copy for yourself to use just in case, but at $120 a pop, I would definitely be looking to offload any extra copies that you might be holding on to. So this is a pretty interesting one. Next we're taking a look at Droll and Lockbird. The main one I'm looking at here is the Ultimate Rare version which I think was just bought out on TCG Player in the last week or so and now sits at almost $300 a piece. However what's also worth noting is that it's all versions of the card that are up in price. The commons from the Spellcaster Structure Deck are up at $10 each. The not so great Maximum Gold Rare reprints with the alternate art are $12 and all other printings of the card are around that $15 to $20 range, which is honestly kind of ridiculous for a card that has seen so many reprints. It's kind of understandable, I guess. The card is a hand trap floodgate that effectively single-handedly shuts down entire strategies in this format. It's really useful against Drytrons, Shadal Invoked, Zodiac Tri Brigade, and even Dragon Link, all of these being meta decks that have a difficult time doing anything under Droll. And just looking at tournament results over the last couple of weeks, I'm seeing it mostly sided, but also even mained in a ton of different strategies. I don't know if Droll and Lockbird is going to be meta after the upcoming ban list, since obviously we don't know what decks are going to survive and continue to take over the meta. Regardless though, I think that people are starting to see Droll and Lockbird as a hand trap staple, very much like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and the card is likely to continue to retain a good chunk of its value, regardless of how many times it gets reprinted. I think that price-wise, ulti drills may cool off a little bit to around the $200 to $220 mark or so, but I think that long term, they are a hand trap that's going to make its way in and out of formats, and that because of that, it's going to retain value most of the time. Another very popular card that we should take a look at here is Ice Dragon's Prison, a trap card that everyone was looking at not too long ago. I think at one point this was one of the most popular trap cards in the game, as it could be extremely disruptive. Against the invoked you could summon and banish your opponent's Alistair, forcing them into an awkward play. Against Dinos you could get rid of something like Misk, and of course, against Dragon Link there were a hundred different places that you could use it as an interruption. Because of this, we did see Ice Dragon's Prison as high as $60 each, which is an absolutely ridiculous price to have to pay for an ultra rare from a fairly recent set. However, we're starting to see Ice Dragon's Prison decline in price as people are moving away from the card slowly. It's pretty bad in matchups against two of the best decks this format, it doesn't really do anything against Drytrons, and then against Tri Brigades, they don't care because you can use Revolt to summon your banished Tri Brigade monsters anyways. Now after some time, this card has fallen to the $50 mark, but I'm fairly confident that this is just the start of its decline. I'm expecting the card to be back down to $30 or so within a couple of months. Keep in mind that this card should be reprinted in the 2021 Megatons as well, hopefully as a secret rare, which I think would look really really cool. Between the expected upcoming reprint and significantly reduced meta viability, expect this card to tank in price very soon, I probably wouldn't want to touch or even think about buying this card again until after the Megaton reprint is released. Okay, so this is one that hasn't quite spiked yet, but it's definitely something I'm looking at that has the potential to shoot up in value from its already high price point. In Burst of Destiny, we're getting a new winged beast archetype called the Flunderese, and I think a lot of people are expecting it to be a top tier deck, as the deck can do some really crazy things. A notable thing about its playstyle is that it really just normal and tribute summons, you don't really do that much special summoning. I think you guys should definitely take a look at Pot of Duality, which could see play in the Flundery strategy as it could improve the deck's consistency and not get hit with the no special summoning drawback of the card. There are currently a ton of different printings of Pot of Duality available on the market, especially in those common rarities, so I wouldn't worry about those too much. However, I do want to take a look at the Ultimate Rares, which are $170 each, and the Secret Rares, which are only about $60 each. 
for a card as iconic as Pot of Duality, I think that if it were to see meta play, I could easily see the ultimate rares hitting $300, and the original secret rares I could see reaching around the $100 mark if they were first edition, so I think that both of these cards are undervalued for what they are for now. Obviously take this with a grain of salt, there's no guarantee that the Flunderies archetype is going to be good since we haven't seen how the deck will do in the OCG or anything like that either, we don't have that much to go off of, we just have what the card text says, and maybe the deck is all hype and it isn't going to perform as well as we're all expecting it to. Of course, do your own due diligence and research before you buy into this card, but it is in my opinion something to keep an eye on over the next several months. And the last card that we're taking a look at here guys, it's not as crazy as some of the other things, it's number 99 Numeron Dragon, so if you guys haven't seen we are getting some new Utopia support eventually, it's in the form of a structure deck over in the OCG, but maybe it will get meshed in with a side set here, the way that the Dragoonity stuff was in Ghost from the Past, who knows. Anyways, I have to assume that that is why number 99 has spiked up in price out of nowhere. You can summon this card by using a Utopia as a material and then discarding a rank up magic spell card so the card is fairly easy to bring out. Alternatively, there is a new hyper rank up card that lets you turn any Utopia monster into Utopic Dragon. Now if this card is targeted, you can detach a material from this card to negate that effect activation and destroy it. And it also lets you special summon another number monster from your graveyard once per turn, which I guess is cool, but of course this thing is also a 4000 attack point beat stick as well. I don't know that this card is necessary for the deck, since I did see a few lists that didn't use it, though obviously only time will tell, as people try out the new stuff. Now Utopic Dragon just has two secret rare printings available, one from New Challengers and the other one from the Megatons for that set, which means that this card hasn't been reprinted since 2015 and it's quite hard to find, as both of the printings available are secret rares. It does have the added value of being a fairly collectible card as a number monster with limited printings, so right now we're seeing the card at anywhere from $35 to $40 for either version, which is a lot considering that the card was under $10 for basically all of the past 6 years. Expect this card to stay hyped up for a while because the Utopia deck is going to be a popular one with fans of the anime especially, though remember that the card could be included in a reprint set at any time, so definitely don't get caught holding onto too many copies and consider offloading your excess as soon as possible. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. We're about to hit a really crazy reprint season, so it's definitely even more important to keep an eye on the market than usual, because cards can lose value really quickly if you aren't paying attention. Hopefully this is going to make Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot more affordable and accessible, because really the game just has been so expensive for the last little while, it's been really hard to get players to commit to playing, especially without any sort of real life events, so this should be a breath of fresh air for a lot of players. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button for me and let me know. Also make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about the cards that we talked about in today's episode, as well as let me know about what other cards are trending on the market or what cards you guys want to hear about so I can hopefully cover them in a future episode as well. Also if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button for all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself here on the channel. And until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.